Oh, hey guys, you're watching Dansky. Welcome back to another video. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to create a golf ball in Blender. So once we've made the golf ball, we're also going to add some materials and then we're going to animate it at the end. And when I first learned this and I made it, I felt pretty proud of myself. And so hopefully when you finish this video, you'll feel proud of yourself too. Anyway, that's enough feelings. Let's hop into Blender and get started. Rightio, first things first, let's select everything and then press X to delete. Now we're going to add a new shape. Let's press Shift A and then add an icosphere. From the bottom left corner, we can expand this panel and adjust the settings. Let's set the subdivisions to four. You can press the full stop or the period key on the keyboard to zoom to your selection. And this is what it looks like. Next, let's add a modifier. We'll go down to subdivision surface and this is going to add more geometry. Let's go up here and just apply this. And if we then tab into edit mode, we can see all of this new geometry in all of its orange glory. Now make sure you're in vertex select mode, which is number one on the keyboard. And inside one of these hexagons, select a single vertex. Press Shift G and select the bottom option to select similar anchor points. And then if we right click, we can select dissolve vertices. Now you can see there's a few left over. However, we just need to repeat the process. Remember that Shift G, select by the amount of connecting edges, right click and dissolve vertices. There we go, all looking good. Next, press X and then go down to Limited Dissolve. This will help remove any unnecessary geometry. Next, we need to inset all of these faces. So in edit mode, if we press I, you can see nothing happens. However, if we press I again and then drag, well, you've got to be careful here. You can see it can go quite crazy, but we want something really subtle. And you can see everything intersecting wildly here. However, if you very slowly go the other way, you should get something that looks like this. And of course, once you've done that, you can then adjust the properties from the panel on the left-hand side. So you can see me just fine tuning that inset. And I think something that looks like this is just about right. Okay, let's press tab to come out of edit mode and add another modifier. It's going to be another subdivision surface and we're going to increase the levels in the viewport up to two as well. Yet again, adding more geometry to our shape. And you can see it really does soften and smooth out some of those harder edges. Okay, next let's switch over to the render preview and it just looks like a gray nothing because we don't have any light. So let's go down to the world tab and change color to environment texture. Now let's go to open and we're going to select an HDRI. Now you can get tons of these for free from HDRI Haven, Polyhaven, whatever it's called these days. And I'll add a link in the description. So I'm going to select one of my favorites, that's Studio Small. And you can see the pink disappears and it wraps the environment around our scene. And of course this environment has light in it, so it's casting that light on our object. Next from the render tab, I'm going to enable some additional options. It's definitely going to get us a better end result using Eevee. And also if we go down to the film tab, Let's expand this down and check transparent. This will hide the HDRI, but it's still casting all of its light. Now with the golf ball selected, let's add a new material. There we go, new material added. Let's give it a name. I'm gonna call mine ball. Great, suitable name check. Let's go and play around with the properties. Now, of course you can change the base color, but we're going to leave ours white. And if you scroll down, there's lots of options. Don't be intimidated by this. The only two we're gonna focus on is the roughness and the metallic. Think of roughness as how glossy it is. If you crank it all the way up, it's gonna have a matte finish. Bring it down, it's gonna be reflective. And metallic, well, pretty self-explanatory, more metal-like, shiny, reflective, all that good stuff. Now the option I just selected hides the overlay and I can spin this round and get a good look at my golf ball. Let's turn this back on and then press Shift A. And now it's time to add a camera. Now it's going to add the camera at the position of the 3D cursor. So let's just zoom out. You can see it here. And you can control the camera from the object properties panel. And personally, I like to set everything to zero and start there. So I can now press G and move this around to freely move the camera. Or after pressing G, I can follow that up with Y and it will snap to the Y axis. I can then press R for rotate and follow that up with X to rotate this along the X axis. And I can either follow that up by pressing 90 to snap this to 90 degrees, or I can insert this value into the object properties panel. Now I'm going to adjust the position of the location. However, it would be much easier if I could see what I'm doing. So I'm going to select the camera icon, get a preview of how it looks, and then I'm gonna make those adjustments. So the composition's looking good. Next, I'm going to expand the timeline, just drag that up slightly. And then I'm going to press N on the keyboard, which brings out these additional panels. And if I select the golf ball, from this panel, I can then adjust the location, rotation, or scale of the object. So I'm going to rotate this along the Z axis, and then I'm going to set this back to zero and press I to add a keyframe. And you can see in the bottom left at the start of the timeline, it's added a yellow keyframe. 
Now I'm going to scrub forward on my timeline. You can see it's turned green, and if I then adjust the z-axis again, it turns orange, indicating I've made a change. Now I'm going to set this to 360 so it rotates in a full circle, but you need to press I again to add that change as a keyframe. So now I've got two keyframes, and you can see I can play between them. However, there's a little bit of easing by default, a bit of a wind up. So if I go into the timeline and press T, I can set the interpolation as linear, so the animation will always play at a constant speed. So let's give that a play, and you'll now see this animation playing at a constant speed, and it will loop seamlessly. Well, I mean, it would have looped if I hadn't stopped the animation. And once you've done your final render, this is how it looks in Eevee, and this is how it will look in Cycles. And there we go, that wraps up the video. So hopefully you had fun making and animating a golf ball. Please consider leaving a like, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. Take care, and I'll see you next time.